Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. Welcome back, onesies. It's the radio version of RBF, the audience of one show on Conroe's 106.1 and 104.5, IRLoneStar.com, and wherever you get your podcasts from. I am Andrew, next to the guy who was just caught reselling prime soda in the schoolyards, the Montgomery County Marauder, Dick Schisler. You got to catch him when it's hot. That's right. I could just see you in the schoolyards. I got the goods you're looking for, kid. It's the watermelon berry flavor. I got it for you. You know, it's funny. It's, I'm not really one to pay attention to certain aspects of pop culture. Yeah. Like, for example, the Kardashians, I could maybe, like, if you did a lineup, like, who's who, I'd be like, yeah. I know one of them's Kim Kardashian. Right. And I think that's it. But yeah, same thing same with way. the Prime guy, because <laughs> I think he fought. He did. He fought this weekend so that was in Dallas. Him. Uh, well, okay, so actually, there's I think two it's, of them. He, right, I know, and there's I think two it's, brothers. I think I actually got them confused. Yeah, I think I Lo- Logan is the one running the soda, but Paul is the one that fought, and I got him confused. I think well, I no, last episode. The other one is a wrestler. Right, he's a yes, he's in like uh, a WWE. WWE. Yeah, and then the so, other guy's an actual fighter. Yeah, it's really, <laughs> and I'm like, I don't I know. really know, but it, they're always in the news. I'm like, it's one of them. I thought it was one guy because the only time I really got introduced, <laughs> I didn't even know. Oh yeah, when I got introduced, I was listening to some financial podcast thing, and they were talking about how this guy scams people doing like a uh, crypto. It wasn't crypto specifically. It mm-hmm. was like a. Actually, no, I think it was. It's one of those things where... You, How to scam people doing crypto. Nice. Like, well, you buy a dinosaur egg, and it it opens up at one point, and that's your, what do they call it? The, uh, man, NTF. N- NFT. NFT. Non-fungible token. Yeah, so that's what, and then apparently it was a scam or something. I don't know. There was something with gorillas, too. I remember those being real, so, real big uh, a couple years ago, people buying, like, unique NFT gorillas. And didn't like Justin Bieber buy one that was supposed to be really rare for like one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars, and now it's now it's practically but I have worthless. No idea. That's the only kind of introduction I had. Then I then I understood that one of them was a good fighter. But yeah. At least I knew there were two of them. I I guess right? I, yeah. I mean I think I knew there was two of them, but I didn't realize it until and they look exactly the same. They kind of look similar. I think they have the same hairstyles. I would not I it's, would not doubt that. No, I saw them this weekend and, fighting, or I heard about that one of them fought up in Dallas and. I was like, oh, wait, there's two of them because the brother was promoting his brother's win. And I'm like, oh, that's right. Oh, he's the one with the soda we talked about. My yeah, bad. I have no idea. But uh, but welcome to Audience of One. We're here every Wednesday at 10 o'clock on podcasts, Lone Star Community Radio. I heard that yeah. we were rated the number one show in Conroe that want, runs at Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Yeah, I believe it. And Unbelievable. Uh, and I it's just an want, honor. I want to Conroe, let our listeners it's an know honor. we're supported by listeners, so there is a donation link in the deal, so that helps keep the station free for everybody yep. and lets Andrew have a place to come in with the lights on. That's right. And uh, So, Andrew, how was your Please week? Please let me continue doing radio, yeah. Conroe. Oh, it was awesome, man. It's back to school time. Yeah. Uh, when this show airs, I believe it will be the first day of school for the Conroe ISD. Okay. So, welcome back to school, everyone. That's good to know, That's good to know when not to drive on certain roads. Yeah, and, right. Uh, good luck to the kids going back to school. Yeah. Because. And I think we talked a little bit about it. We teased it last week, uh, going back to school. And I liked the whole back to school process, to be honest with you. I, I loved school show, uh, clothes shopping. I loved that. Like getting new. Now, you were the youngest of like six, right? I yeah. think. So did you get new clothes no. or were you always getting hand-me-downs? Always yeah. hand-me-downs. I think this is a hand-me-down. <laughs> right. To be honest, I don't really, I haven't really changed my clothes. Yeah, we've had that discussion yeah. too. So, but yeah, I definitely had hand me downs, and then uh, that's pretty much it. That's the end of that story. Yeah, so. right. No, I loved it because my brother's like five or six years older than me, so it didn't really work. I was always getting fresh clothes, and it was kind of like, okay, right there in the middle of August or towards the end of August, my mom would take me to go back to school shopping, and it was awesome. And I was always allowed like one nice shirt. Right, and which I guess meant kind of expensive. So I'm thinking, all right, I get the Tommy Hill figure with the denim collar. Let's go, you know. But I was allowed one, and uh, usually she would prefer one that I didn't have. She didn't have to iron, right? <laughs> because you know that's a pain in the butt. So I loved doing that, and I loved getting back to school like school supplies. 
that was always fun. And I think that experience has kind of changed now, too, because you don't know this because you don't have kids, but a lot of times now they have prepackaged, you can buy the supplies from the school and they already come prepackaged. But I'm like, that's, that sucks. That yeah, takes no, all the fun out of it. I, no, I do know that because I remember for some reason down the line of those prepackages included like two boxes of, of tissues. Yeah, right. And yeah. it's like, what is this for? It's like, for the teacher so she can teacher. cry when she yeah, every day I, coming into school. I, I, well, no, it's just funny. Oh, I gotta face these. Well, no, it's just funny to me. Someone like, because I remember getting the school list, and it was always like two to three boxes of tissues, and I was like, Why is everybody? So does the school just silly. literally? The school got together and was like, Hey, we're not gonna give anyone tissues. We can sucker that out of the, the students. Yeah, you could tell there were some supplies for the kids and some for the teachers. Yeah, yeah no doubt. It's like ibuprofen. What is? Why is that on the list? That's for Miss Walker's hangover. <laughs> <laughs> You After know, she goes out I on will, teacher's night on Thursday nights. I will, I will you know, say this. I was, I was completely ignorant of, like, the teacher's lifestyle. Even after I graduated high school, I was still ignorant of, like, oh, they're, prob- they're people, too. I always thought yeah. of them as teachers, like, they're boring and they suck. Yeah. So it's like, but that they only exist when I'm there. And when always, I'm gone, they're not existing Always anymore. shocking to see one out in the wild, you know, and outside the confines of school. It's like, whoa, like, whoa, what are you doing here at the grocery store? Get back in the school where you belong. Yeah, it was it very was, weird. It was, uh... But I remember school uh, back to school supply shopping because I always wanted to get like the cool trapper keeper. You know, I had to have the one with the the skateboard on it, skateboard uh, man really or something about, cool. I never cared about. Oh, this I had. Stuff. Oh, I was. Pre- and I liked all the little things that went along with it, like maybe the little pencil holder. You know, to help you aid in holding the pencil right. I would con my mom into getting me those every year, even though I never probably used them. I loved all that stuff. And then you get to school and you're like, oh, school. Hmm. The fun part was yeah. just buying the clothes and. And shopping for the school supplies. No, the only thing I remember that was always an issue was I always enjoyed the point five millimeter uh, pencils. Pencils for uh, <laughs> you, sorry, I you, you had a, you had a glitch McConnell yeah. in a moment there for a second. Uh, the, 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 not the point seven. And yeah, nobody likes the point seven. But everyone had the point seven, and so but you were different. You could really get in there detailed when you were drawing the mustache on the kids in the in the in the books. Yeah, you could really get a good mustache in there. But yeah. yeah. No. So, did, did you ever? Uh, do you have any like favorite, you know, back either back to school or just school memories, well, like maybe field trips or something? The craziest one besides the blow up gorilla. That, yeah, that was that was the end of the school year. We yeah. weren't even we already graduated, so there was no fear of repercussions with that. But no, the craziest one I remember it was the like fourth grade, and I remember going to school and mm-hmm. coming back and getting off the bus, and I'm walking to the house, and as I'm walking it in, like walking up to like right on our driveway my mother comes out crying gets in her car and leaves okay and just leaves and leaves you there and i was just like oh okay (laughs) and then i was like i hope the door is unlocked and so i go into the house and i'm alone and i was like that's and this is before cell phones before any of that kind of stuff okay no notes nothing so i remember sitting there until like my brother and sister or my sister got home, she had no idea what was going on. I was like, "Yeah, I saw mom. She was crying. Got in the car and left." And uh, and my dad usually worked late, and so when he he finally got home, and I was like, "Oh, mom left. Like, what happened?" And then of course he's like, "Sorry, I didn't call you guys. Your brother's been in an accident." Oh, and I was just like, "What?" And oh. he's like, "Yeah, he. We're all going to Galveston tonight." Oh no! And you know we might lose your brother. And I was just like, "What?" Yeah, I was like, "What?" Um, and so, yeah, we all got in the car on my first day. <laughs> that was that is definitely a first day of school memory right there. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Assuming but, everything turned out okay. And, oh, no, he's dead. Uh, oh, stop it. No, I'm just kidding. No, he, he survived. He got, God, yeah. man. No, he, he luckily, it was actually kind of a miracle kind of scenario. He uh, was painting our beach house, and he hit the scaffolding against mm. the, against the uh, like, what, I'm going blank again, against the power line. And so he got electrocuted like 70% of his body. Whoa. And yeah, so he was at the, luckily, apparently Galveston has one of the best burn units in the country. Mm. So Luckily. Luckily. Whoa. So uh, yeah, so that was. That's scary. That was my first day. <laughs> and it was. Man, what grade was this? This is fourth grade. Fourth grade. Okay, so that it, enters the little bastard area. Yeah, that's. Yeah, okay, that's, I think, our that's line That's when I knew I needed to be good. I was yeah. like, I, but yeah, that was my first. What about your first day of school? Well, I don't know about first day of school. No, it was first day of school. So I, I think I told you last week I, I went to private school up until sixth grade, and then I went to public school in seventh grade. And there's just a drastic difference between public and private school. And so that first day of seventh grade was quite eye-opening. And I think there was a massive fight. 
Now, I was never in danger from any of these fights, but there were never any fights, you know, in my elementary, my private elementary school. These were always beef between two kids, but it was scary because I'm like, oh my gosh, what's happening? The first day of school and these kids are just going at it, you know, going into the school. But it was kind of funny. I'm sure you had fights at your school too, right? I mean, periodically. Mm-hmm. Oh, we had them all the time. I don't know. I went to school in the hood, I guess. Well, no, I mean, I think I, I'm the complete opposite. I went to public school, and then we switched, switched to private Switched to private, school okay. All because right. I think there were too many fights. I have no <laughs> idea. I was completely ignorant of the situation. But uh, Nothing's changed. Yeah. But it, I, I think it's interesting fights between, like, adults and children. Like, if, if I came in and said something bad about your girlfriend, you just you just beat, beat my ass right here, right? Oh, let's go at it. But with kids, it's kind of funny. Like, you, you they plan out fights, like, a week or two in advance. It was always one of these things. Hey, you hear David's gonna fight Joey? Yeah. Like what? Yeah. What? What's going? Joey and David are gonna fight. Whoa! So you go talk to David. Hey, David, here you're gonna fight. Yeah, man. It's going when are you down. Gonna, yeah, when are you gonna, when are you gonna do it? Two weeks from now, we're all going out to the playground and we're gonna fight. Wow! What what did, what did he do? He talked bad about my girlfriend. When did he do that? Last month. <laughs> it's always so weird. Yeah. Like, and then and then half the time it never happens. But it's always like this big build up. You know, adults are like, let's just go now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, fights in school. That's fun, but yes, back to school. Back to school You talk. still got, you have your daughter going back to school, but she's old enough to where she's probably over high school already. Oh, she's over everything. She's a teenager, you know. Yeah. You know how that goes. Like, well, I remember going into, when I was in high school, high school was fine until, I want to say, like, junior year, I was over it. Mm-hmm. And I think it was because, I re- like, someone at my age skipped senior year. And they're, because they, they're like, oh yeah, I already, I already took, the SATs, I already did all this stuff. I'm, I'm already accepted. Like, I, I, I graded out. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you can do that? Like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, well. And I was like, well, I wish I, could, I wish I could do that. I should have just been told that. I would have studied and actually, right. like, tried to get I, out of here. See if I can get out a year of this. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is terrible. You no, know, school, I was, I'm, not a, I'm not a big fan of school. How about the uh, reading out loud? I was were you always, that. You were okay with that? I, I hated reading out loud. I don't. I don't know that it was necessarily something I struggled with because I know there were kids that did. And I always felt terrible for them because it would come around their turn and they're d- 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 stuttering or they're nervous or whatever. But the teacher always made them read out loud. I'm sure there's some reason as to why, but God, I hated it. Or the one boy whose voice always cracked or something and it was a joke for everybody. What a terrifying thing to do to kids. <laughs> well, right, I don't know. Read I, th- out loud I, think today. It, mm-hmm. I think what bothered me the most about it was because different teachers had different philosophies. And I always enjoyed the teachers who had the philosophy of like, "Hey, we're here to learn. Mm-hmm. Here, here's the like this week's plan. Here's your homework. This is what we're gonna be doing." And then they don't really set a due date besides like the main due date, mm-hmm. and you could turn in it in any time. And I was like, "Okay, I love it." So it's not like I have to do something like a fourth of the work every day. I can just sit down and just do it. Right. And then you had the teachers who like required you to be there, required you to do X, Y, Z, and it's like, oh, this I is hated so, those teachers. Well, it's just boring. I'm <laughs> like, I'd rather just leave and do the homework and figure out myself. Man. And then, uh, but that was it. Was certain teachers? Certain teachers were a good teacher, so I didn't mind sitting right. there and listening to them. But when they do the stupid like, oh, we got some packets, just do the packet. So I'm like, I'm like, so this is like a study hall. Yeah. Is that what's going that on right such now? A, that was such a cop out. Like, can I just leave? Yeah, that's that's a cop out. So yeah. If you're a teacher, though, don't don't be that teacher, right. unless you're really hungover. <laughs> then I get it. And it just, maybe it, that teacher was always hungover. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I think my, one of my favorite memories was when back to school. Is we went to school and they had uh, the smart boards. I don't know mm-hmm. if you've ever seen that. No tech. man. So it's basically like a whiteboard. I had chalk, but it uh, it was a whiteboard, but it had touch screen capabilities. Good grief! And so it was on like a projection. I think it was a projection. I don't think it was actually like uh-huh. like an actual screen. I think it was a projection, but it was some teachers really got it, right? <laughs> and some struggled with the and tech. And some were, but like for some reason, the school goes, "Yeah, we everyone has to use it, and everyone has to." Yeah, because they invested in it, they got to make sure that they're getting their money. And worth everyone it. has to use blackboard dot com or whatever. You know that I think mm-hmm. that, that one year we did that and it was a complete failure because you can greatly you can make great excuses and not turn it in like, "Oh, my power went out." And I lost everything. Sorry. But yeah, the, the touchscreen thing was funny to me because some teachers really got it. And so, I mean, some teachers were spending half the class trying to turn Sounds it like on. I missed out on a lot of fun on that so, one. So, uh, well, that's back to school talk. We did it. We, we killed our back to school yeah. segment as promised. All right. We know it's time for serious talk, baby. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about today's show. We got a lot of great topics, man. It is the like almost the middle of August, dude. 
August I, time 9th. Has flown by. It really has. What is time, anyways? It's a flat circle. I don't know. Last week, speaking of time, last week you talked about uh, the people on the set of Titanic being poisoned with PCP. And I'm I pretty said, sure what? that was a true story. And I'm like, there's no way. I think I would have heard of that. Well, I went and looked it up, and I'll be darned if you weren't right. You know your movie trivia, including people getting drugged on the set of Titanic. On August 9th, 1996, in Nova Scotia, Craft Services provided the, cr- the cast and crew with clam chowder. Yummy clam chowder. You like clam chowder? No. Oh, sounds... I love it. Oh, it's lovely. Which, as it turns out... Well, because I always feel like clam chowder, clam chowder can be like the butt of the joke. Cause, chowder. Because it could be really good or really bad. I think so. Well, that kind of goes for anything, right? I mean... Well, no, because it's like, oh, you have a burger, and it's like, oh, it's still edible. Yeah. But like... There I've, are some better than others. When people say clam chowder, when it's bad, it means like you could get sick. Oh, yeah. No, that's right. Well, in this case, a lot of people did, because as it turns out, this was spiked with PCP. <laughs> It says the meal was so. Listen to this though. It says the meal was so good. Some people even ate three to four bowls, not knowing what would come next. This reminds me of the meth in the soy sauce story that we had last week because I said, "What makes you think they're not doing it on purpose to get people to go? My God, this food is amazing!" To come back to the restaurant. Well, they laced their uh, chowda with PCP, and I guess apparently who did? Uh, this the the craft services uh, that was providing the food for the cast and crew. Oh my gosh. Uh, it said, we had a room from the grips and electricians, and one of the guys started talking really hyper. Uh, crew member Jake Clark told uh, Vulture, he's a big guy like 6'4". Do you guys feel okay? Because I don't. I feel like I'm on something. And believe me, I would know. He was just chattering on and on and on. <laughs> so these guys all did get laced. That's crazy, man. So, so I, I had I, never I, heard of that. I didn't, I, I didn't know what PCP does. The only time I've ever heard it is like in the movies where like jack dudes do it and they, like don't, they don't fall down. You know, like they get in trouble by the cops. So what I heard, the first time I had ever heard of PCP was when in the Rodney King story from the 90s, when he, in that terrible incident with him, I had heard that he was on PCP at the time of the incident, which is why he you know, continue to fight because you don't feel anything. Was he really though? I, I don't remember. The, uh, I don't remember. Well, <laughs> but that's the first time I had ever heard the word. According to Wikipedia, PCP. it is a. It can cause hallucinations. Sorry, Rodney, if you weren't. My bad. Distorted perceptions of sound and violent behavior. So uh, I, I don't see how that's a fun recreational drug, uh, with especially the violent behavior part. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I, you know, the idea of the whole cast and crew from. Yeah, and, and especially the next day, we're like, we just don't tell anybody about this. Okay, <laughs> well, I'm sure somebody got prosecuted in it because, as we we talked about last week with trash can fries, that is a felony offense to mess with people's food. Wait, I wonder how much PCP you would need. Just enough, man, to get the whole cast. Yeah, crew. that's a good. That's you know what? That's a good question. I don't know, and I'm kind of curious as to why uh, you're asking. <laughs> oh no! Why I, are you curious? <laughs> well, I mean, because I, I, I like to cook. I want to provide PCP for everyone. And I, I want to. I want to make sure everyone's well, getting. Because if experience. it's a if it's a revenge tale, <laughs> right? You have to make sure it's potent enough for that one person to get it. Sure. Because if you drop it in the trash can, fill up the trash can with clam chowder, and you're like, I hope they eat this. But you have to make it strong enough that I hope they eat enough. I can't. I just don't get the payoff. Is it because somebody wants to sit back and watch the chaos? That's the only thing I can think of. Right. I mean, because. It, if you want to get high, just go get high on yourself. But, no, no, that's but not. It's that's not it. Saying, is it a they, revenge story, or is I think it, they might like watching other people. I mean, destroy themselves. It's got to be some sort of weird mental. And he knows some guy was bragging about it, or girl. Was oh, I'm like, sure. Hey, just, oh, I'm just sure. let you know, I totally laced it with like a giant check, amount of drugs. Check this out. You want to go out tonight? And that cast maybe, and crew isn't small. Maybe we can go to the body farm. Yeah, it's not. So I mean, that's, that's a saying. large crew. You I, need to know how, it's, it's a. This was a large investment by this guy. I like, PCP I, can't be cheap. I've cooked before. I'm like, okay, one tablespoon of salt. Got it. Right, turmeric. That's actually a lot of salt. Yeah, but, yeah it is. Uh, turmeric, salt, pepper, PCP. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to know exactly how much to mix it, and I'm sure it has a Cause taste. Because it, it was. You don't just, want people to go. What is this PCP in this clam chowder? Well, as I'm saying, it's you got to make sure like that it's the right amount. The fruit, uh, the fruit punch bowl, and you're like, oh, let me put some whiskey or vodka in that. No one's gonna know because eventually, if you put too much, you were people like, people know, oh, people know, right? So I'm curious. I would. I mean, no one's really talked about it though. Yeah, what does PCP taste like? Well, you know, maybe they can make, maybe the, uh, onesie, Logan Paul. I know there's a onesie out there has done it. Guys, maybe Logan Paul know. can, can <laughs> put this into his new his new soda. The onesie out there, audience of one show at gmail.com. Reach out to us. Let us know. Oh um, man! I hope it tastes like Starburst. That's what I hope. 
but never, my PCP th- would. Then again, I've never had clam chowder, so I've never I love clam chowder. Why? What is it? It's always it's white, right? Yeah. Are you against white foods? White no, foods. No. I think white foods is probably some of the least appetizing, if I had to guess. No, I, bl- I prefer my queso blanco. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Well, then there you go. There's my theory. It lasted all of five seconds. Staying on this theme of water, I heard this story and it was just terrifying. Something is not adding up, but I heard that an Indiana mom died from water toxicity over the weekend after drinking 16 ounces of, of water, four, I'm sorry, after drinking four 16 ounce bottles of water in 20 minutes. And I started thinking about it. I'm like, wait a minute, four bottles of water, 16 ounce in 20 minutes. That doesn't sound like a lot. So are you familiar with this, this, um, this malady that can occur by drinking too much water? Uh, hyper, what's it called? Hypertoxicity? Yeah, I've, I've, I remember, but I had thought it had something to do with your body was, uh, uh, has been withheld from water for no. so long. And then if you, water if, toxicity. If you rush the water into your system, it's bad. I, so well, that, well, cause I, I remember reading something about heat stroke and like if mm-hmm. you're, you know, if you're working outside, it's not good to like chug water. Correct. Because it's oh, it, your body over It gets the imbalance yeah. of sodium and water yeah. out of whack because if you're sweating a lot and you're just, and you're start chugging water, it can get out of whack. But what I think is interesting, like anytime the human body takes something on that it doesn't like, usually our first reaction is you to throw up. throw up. Like yeah. if you drink too much, you're going to throw up. <laughs> but with water, it doesn't do a darn thing. It just, you just. Start getting dizzy and then you pass out and die. But so this, this lady passed out and died. Yes, after four only or four bottles of sixteen. That's just like regular. I guess that's the, this size. Yeah, that's sixteen ounces. Four of these in twenty minutes and she dies. I'm like, man, there's got to be something else, some other yeah. underlying health condition or what, something. Did she get the jab? Uh, yeah, that's it. She got the jab. I don't know. Um, <laughs> that's, but my, it, that's my new favorite thing, the by jab. the way. It's no like, matter what it is, well, she now, the now it's like if anyone dies under like mysterious, she got the jab. Does she get the jab? <laughs> Does she get? I mean, it reminds me so much of the X Files. It's hilarious. Like, every time I hear it, I'm like, man, that X Files. Uh, the second, I think it was the second season. It was all about that kind of stuff, and I was like, this is so great. This is actually real. People are like, did they? Did they? Uh, we don't want to talk. About, no, what was it? Jamie Fox when he sadly had that stroke. Uh-huh. People were like, did he? Uh, did he? No, no. Did he? Did he? Did and I'm he? like, did he do drugs? Was he doing drugs while he's doing it? Is that what you're trying to get? No, no. Did he? You know, get the, uh, get the. Uh. I'm like, was he doing heroin? What do you mean? Like, is that what caused the stroke? Doing cocaine? Well, no, the jab, man, the jab. Okay, I guess you could think that. <laughs> I think it'd be more of like drugs or something like. Yeah, that would no, cause it. That's a uh, that's a very divisive subject these days. I'll tell you that. Yeah, let's much. talk about. Yeah, it. Yeah, let's talk about it. <laughs> Uh, but no, it is kind of scary the fact that you can just drink water, something that your body needs, well, you, and, and a relatively small amount, and kill yourself. But it reminded me, I, every time I hear one of these stories... Wouldn't I'm, you be so pissed, though, if like, your loved one died that way? And it's yeah, like, That's a crappy way to go. Well, as I'm saying, like, I'd be so frustrated, because you say you're, go, you're on your, uh, your fishing boat, mm-hmm. and you're fishing with your girl, and she chugs four things of water, and then the, by the time you get home, she's dead, and you're going, like, what happened? Yeah. What did she, she drank too much? What happened? And then, like water. a week later, they're like, "Oh yeah, she died because she drank too." You, yeah, you gave her too much water. Yeah, you feel I'm like, like you're an accomplice. I was just giving her a bottle of water. But anytime I hear stories like this, I'm reminded of the first time I heard that this was even possible, and I think it was back in like 2006, 2007. There was a radio show that did a contest to see who could drink the most water without peeing, and it was called "Hold Your Wee for a Wee." W E E for P, a Wii, W I I, I think, for a Nintendo Wii. And the, the, the concept here was they had several contestants come into the studio, you know, wacky radio guys, and they had contestants just continually start drinking water. And this one woman, I don't know, she probably drank gallons though, ended up killing herself, from what I can remember, killing herself from drinking too much water like this. And of course, I think the radio. Um, people lost their job, they were fired and sued and everything else because they were held liable for, for this. But that is really, really scary. But when you see this 35-year-old woman didn't drink that much water. Ugh. Anyways. So watch, Anyways. Your, watch your water intake. Well, there there's not like a sign. You know, I, what do you mean a sign? Well, like, you know, if you're doing too much, you know, of something, you're gonna be like, I don't feel good. Well, there now. is a Surgeon General's warning on cigarettes and beer and stuff, yeah. but nothing on this That's one, man. Did you hear all of these stories? I imagine that you did of the Chinese bear that was shockingly looking like a human being. 
you've had to have heard this. No. Oh my God, this story. You know, was, I'm not into like you know. Oh, this story fake was fake news everywhere. So apparently, there was a Chinese zoo that was getting a lot of attention last week or the week before even. Actually, I did. that looks pretty good. And the reason it was getting a lot of attention is this bear. You'll want to show this picture. Well, like the head looks pretty good. You want to see? And I don't know if you can blow that picture up, but I'm trying. Um, it's really funny. So this is a sun bear. And in this one particular instance, the sun bear stands up, and it does right. appear to be very human-like. Because you could see the wrinkles well, I mean, there yeah, on see, his yeah. butt. I can see the human, but the head actually looks... It that, does kind of look like a man in a loose pair of jeans with a flat butt. It does look a little strange. And then you can see in the other picture, he's seen as waving just a week later when they had to you know, deny that this was a, a person in a costume. Of course, it's 100 degrees there, so any person in a costume is liable to, to die in the heat. But it's, of course, as you would expect, has led to an increase in visitors to the zoo, so they're benefiting from it. But it does look awfully a lot like Wait, a human. They, they, this is not a human? No, this is a real bear, man. There's no <laughs> way it's standing up that straight. Yeah, apparently that's a behavior of the sun bear, that they, they have little... But look at his legs. I know. <laughs> it looks like a human. There's no way. So yeah, people started capturing pictures of this and, and posting it on social media saying, this is not a real bear. There's no way this is a real bear. I love it. Oh. Now, now it's just random pictures of bears. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, yeah it's kind of dumb. That's, but. that's dumb. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that uh, you hadn't heard of that. It was at the Hangzhou Zoo in the provinces. Of well, I don't get my China Daily delivered to my house like you do. And this was all, well, true. True. I, I think I, what it is I is you like this because it it was from China, and you're like, you know, those Chinese people they're always doing something shady over there. People always. in costumes, yeah, and fake iPods, <laughs> fake iPods. <laughs> Are there, was that really a story? No, it's they, they have counterfeit stuff there, like for every type of tech. You didn't know oh that. yeah, of course. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I didn't know exactly what you were referring yeah. to. Well. I, well, I know you didn't see this story because this was not like one that was making all the rounds, but it did capture my attention that a man, have you ever donated something to say like Goodwill, clothes, yeah. furniture or something? I'm in, the, I'm in the habit, especially with kids, I'm in the habit of routinely clearing out the closets when they yeah. outgrow stuff and donate it and the occasional small kitchen appliance or something. Well, this man apparently donated a couch in Australia and wouldn't you know... He forgot that he had put thirty thousand dollars in the couch. Yeah, I doubt that. That means that guy's <laughs> doing PCP or something a lot to where he forgets. Dude, what is this guy's deal? So apparently, thirty k in a couch. Thirty k in a couch. You're not talking like it just fell out of his pocket. Uh, no, he well, he says he accidentally left it in there. So I guess he was hiding it. And it sounds like he's. Uh, I mean, how many people have? That amount of cash laying around, oh, I guess, and it not uh, be oh, for nefarious things. You guess he was high. Yeah, he had, it. he loved the Japanese soy sauce, or he was an extra on on Titanic. I mean, <laughs> one of the two. I don't know, but yeah, this guy um, uh, leaves thirty grand in there, and they can't find it. Of course, there's no records of who purchased the the, the sofa, but it was like a sectional, and I think he'd only sold one section or one part of the couch. And so it got split up or something. And he, this guy is out of his thirty grand, man. That sucks. And on the complete opposite side of the story, and will this be the last story we do before the break? A couple, a horrified couple, <laughs> they found something in their couch as well. Not nearly as exciting as thirty grand. Would you like to guess what they found in a second-hand sofa that they got? From well, I can the... see what they found. You sent me the link. A couple in terrifying. Ireland was shocked and revulsed after uncovering thousands of human fingernails leak, <laughs> lurking beneath the cushions of their second-hand sofa couch or cushions. Dude. That is uh, so gross. I think I'd rather be on the thirty thousand in uh, deal side of the deal. Uh, I did. I had a guy, a coworker, years ago who would cut his fingernails at his desk. That's so gross, man. Because when you clip those things, they're like. Little bombs going off, and they, pew, they fly off. You have yeah. absolutely no control where those things are going. And he would just clip his nails and put them in a little pile on his desk. I'm like, bro, do that at home. That is so nasty. Ugh, what would you do if you found all those fingernails on the couch? You burning it? You giving it up? Or you just cleaning it? You say, oh, I'll just clean the couch. I really like it. This is a great floral pattern. Yeah, sure. I'd just clean it if I really like the couch. But if it's a secondhand couch, that means I can get another one pretty fast. Yeah, I the thing so too. they or, probably got it really cheap. Well, there, you know, there's always those moments, and especially like as you're getting older, 
you don't know what to do with. So like furniture, or like computer parts or paint and stuff. It's like, what are you really supposed to do? Like, can I put this in the trash can? Or can I not put this in the trash I can? I think the proper and, and most environmental friendly way to dispose of a couch is to light it on fire. Yeah, I burn. Well, the, Absolutely. Because you were asking if we donated anything like clothes. And usually the clothes that I'm getting rid of have been worn and torn and soiled Right, because you're the sixth owner at this yeah, point. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. they and so I'm like, I'll just burn it. That's more fun. Absolutely. So Absolutely. All right, man, that is all we got for this first half of the show. When we come back, you think you had a bad day? Well, one local Houston woman has got it beat. Trust me. We'll be back with more Audience of One Show. Okay, I know we're on a break, but I... I, We were on a break! I know we're on a break, but I'm getting tired of all these articles Andrew keeps sending me. They're great, and you know it. It's all trash kind of the point but it got me thinking andrew mm-hmm. you the listener can submit articles oh yeah and ideas and topics yeah they can audience of one show at gmail.com that's correct or facebook look up audience of one show with uh andrew and dick otherwise you're subject to stories about kids sleeping outside that apparently dick cannot stand no uh i mean i i'm tired of this fake news and i know the the cancer that is growing within audience of one is andrew and his terrible ar- articles so we need stories. Come on, man. We need it's not it. that bad. We need stories. <laughs> so send us your ideas at audience of one show at gmail.com and Facebook, audience of one with Andrew and Dick. That's us. All right. So we look forward to hearing from you guys. And hopefully we have better topics on the next episode. And if we don't and they're still terrible, I suppose it's my fault. Yes. <laughs> Audience of One here on Lone Star Community Radio every Wednesday at 10 a.m. on Facebook, Lone Star Community Radio, YouTube, Lone Star Community Radio, and of course, podcast. Look up Audience of One Show with Andrew and Richard or Andrew and Dick or whichever they will allow us to do that. Um, <laughs> whatever site won't censor us because of our terrible and that, name. That, well, that happened the other day with me. I, I was like, oh, it was on Instagram. I was trying to say like a joke. About me in reference to me. And mm-hmm. it said, like, oh, you can't use Dick. <laughs> Even though I wasn't calling anybody, I was like, oh, it's me, Dick. And. Yep. So Trust I, me, I, I run got, into that issue all the time trying to mo- promote the show. It's why we got rid of yeah. the Dick. Yeah. So, uh, audience of one, we're here. We're an hour, about an hour long every Wednesday talking about whatever the heck we want. We always love our onesies to send in stuff. So, contact us via Facebook or audience of one show at gmail.com. And then, uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. But we're back for the second half. We are. And you want to talk about weird sports. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about weird sports on this show before and how ESPN The Ocho has played into the weird sports. But I think this one, I say it may take the cake. I don't even know. But apparently this weekend, they I don't know if it was even a debut or just the return of professional pillow fighting. <laughs> Really? This is a thing, apparently. I had no idea, but this is where two competitors get in a ring with a pillow, and I'm sure it's a specialized fighting pillow, right? Yeah. And they go at it. Uh, I mean, I think if I were scrolling through the channel and I stumbled upon this, right, I would I think gotta, it was a joke. I'm gonna pull but this no up. way. It's real, man. So I'm going to go through these pictures. There is a professional the... league. So there's, yeah, this is the guy using the strategy. Yeah. Right here. Keep your distance. And I'm sure, I mean, if you have you ever been hit in the face with a pillow pretty hard? It can it can knock you out. Yeah. I mean, you know, it does kind of remind me of that scene from the movie with Rob Schneider. And I think the movie was called Hot Chicks or something. Okay. And oh, I'm, yeah, and they got in a pillow yeah, fight. They got in a pillow yeah. fight, and it starts off very playful. And then one girl, whoop, kind of hits him right in the face hard. And he's like, oh, shakes it off and decides to wham nail this girl and then he just gets harder and harder and harder and starts just wailing on these chicks and just they go flying across the room yeah i mean uh <laughs> the ocho is the ocho like an actual 24 7 show no i think it was Channel? isn't it like espn2 that they rebrand the ocho like every so often we talked about this and so they rebranded i guess over the weekend or one of one of them maybe it's like espn4 i don't know and uh they started playing pillow fighting Man, which uh, I I think this is definitely a step up from the slap league, which by the way was canceled. But I don't know that I could watch pillow fighting. Yeah, man. so it it looks like it's once a year. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, then it must have just passed, right? Because I just saw this. But, I mean, can you imagine calling your buddies up? Yeah. Hey, man, you want to come over to the house this weekend? Watch some pillow fighting. And you're like, wow, yeah, dude, that sounds great. You're thinking chicks, maybe wearing something, a bikini or something, feathers flying everywhere. No, it's two dudes going at it with pillows trying to knock each other out. Anyways, yeah, so yeah funny. this is interesting. So, yeah, it's for 43 hours they show alternative sports like pillow fighting, uh, slippery stairs. So, I'm sorry, what? Slippery I, I'm, stairs? I'm looking, I'm looking at <laughs> I'm looking at the lineup. Uh, is this like a, a Home Alone thing where you put the tar on the stairs? I have and... no idea. Extreme axe and knife games. Uh, we have arm wrestling. Whoa, 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 whoa. Extreme yeah. knife I'm and really, axe this games. This is real. I'm on their now, website. Now, what Tru- makes it Truck extreme? and tractor pulling. Now that, well, that's legit, that's man. Oh, yeah, my favorite Microsoft Excel World Championship. See, that's on there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, foosball, foosball world cup, disc golf. I like how disc golf's on there. People get pissed when they hear that. Right. That's not alternative. That's mainstream, bro. I guess it was on right before it. USA mullet championship and US air guitar championship. Air guitar championships. Uh, Fling golf. Let's see what else is on there. You need to start telling world dog surfing. Uh, <laughs> you need to start telling some of the ladies Ooh, you participate in some of these to see the reaction. Holding, Stein holding. Oh yeah, see how, see how many beers that people can hold. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. So there we go. Foot, I've seen. I've actually golf. seen those Stein holding competitions in person. Have you, you seen, go like to the beer? No, I've done it. Yeah, before. I've awesome. participated. Have you? It's heavy. Yeah. yeah and I bet it is. And of course, they always put water in there. How many were you able to carry? Well, I didn't. This is the one we did was the uh, the arm extension one. Yeah, where you have to hold them kind of out front. Yeah. Yep. And then you can't bend your arms. Mm-hmm. Um, I watch when you go back and forth from table to table. Yeah. You try and pick up as many as you can and go from one side of the... Oh, this is just you stand still and you're like... Oh, I know that one. Yeah, yeah, as long as you can hold one of them out. Yeah. No, the one I saw, it's usually ladies, I guess, because they have a bosom Who they can use to their advantage. But they stack up these these bottles, uh, you know, presumably oh, of beer, and how many uh, they can carry, okay. and they have to carry it from one table over to the other. And, of course, one of them slips, they all slip usually, and then they have to set it down successfully, and they count how many of the beers have, um, you know, still have water or liquid in them. And, or I say beers. And they're, they're grass, glass bottles. Grass. It's a great competition. Drag racing. Uh, <laughs> corgi races. Corgi races. Yeah. Are the snail races on there? Like we, we mentioned those a few weeks ago as well. Oh, what's fling golf? You're, okay, you know what? Have you ever played uh, foot golf? Flip. Foot. Oh, foot golf. <laughs> well, I do when I accidentally hit the ball out of bounds, and I don't so, want my playing partner to know about it. I if, do a little foot golf. If people didn't know Andrew and I have golfed together, and we're buddies. Look at that. Found it right here on the edge of the fairway. Who would have known? And Could have sworn that was 15 wanted, feet into uh, the woods. Nope, nope, nope. Right here. This is how it was like golfing with Must have hit time, a tree. By the way. Uh, but foot golf is basically... I think you, I play foot you, golf every time a little you bit. You play with soccer balls. And okay. Recently, oh, I... Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. So I have seen that. I, I'm not... So I wanted to tell you, this reminds me of... Uh, so I went to Austin to visit one of my good friends, and we went golfing at one of their public courses. And they had the foot golf course mm-hmm. on the actual golf course. Mm, that probably pissed off all the golfers. And it confused me <laughs> like no other... And like for example, I think the rule of thumb it was a nine hole course, so uh-huh. you can do it twice if you wanted to. But there's two foot golf holes on each hole. Okay. Okay. And so, say you're at your tee box, fifty yards, seventy five yards in front of you is a, uh, is a flag, and you're like, that's a short hole. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh no, that's the foot golf one. And then there's you can't a, mix these two at the same yeah. time. And then you? there's a tee box by uh-huh. that foot one by to the next one on the same hole which is usually by the actual golf hole and i kid you not one time i wasn't even paying attention i was just trying to line my shot up and i hit it and i thought i hit it so i was like oh that's gonna be that's right next to it that's right next that's money it's money it's right next to the flag and it was next to the the wrong flag the soccer foot golf one and i was like Uh, for, for those of you who don't know what foot golf is it's basically Guys kicking soccer ball into a hole from a tee, just like they would. Just like golf. Just like golf. It looks like a lot of fun. It does look like a lot of fun. I've seen footage of the guys lining up putts, and they get all real serious. Yeah. I'm going to have a a dick moment here. I thought we talked about this already on our show, and I can't remember if we did. Onesies, my apologies. No, I think think we talked about about the game itself, but I don't think we talked about actually golfing on a golf course. No, 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 no. no, And trying to, like, not – because I'm telling you, it screwed with me so much. It's like, it's okay. But clearly they have different flag colors and everything. But I don't remember. I'm like, I'm new here. It is funny to watch them putt, though. They get it all and, lined up well, and kick the little I was wondering. So it, it rained. Ball. It rained previously when we got there. And I looked. I, my ball was probably, I don't know, 
six inches from the, their, that hole. Mm-hmm. And it was filled. So it was filled with crap. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, what actually happens on the golf? Like, what are the rules of golf if my ball went in there? And it, like, floated and bounced out or something? No, it just landed in there. And oh, it was just... Okay. It was just oh, I see what you're saying. When you're playing real golf, yeah. Oh, you'd probably it'd, yeah, they'd let you take it out. Okay, yeah. Because it, it was like it's a deep it'd be hole. A it's yeah, a deep hole. It <laughs> you got to play it as it lies. Yeah, well, I don't play know. it as I it was lies because like, it was like right in the middle of the fairway, like right in front. Of, it was right in front of the green of the flag that I was trying to. Because both for some reason both flags lined up perfectly, and I was like, that's why I guess I shot towards it. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, Ocho, that's, Ocho that's, baby, that's Ocho. Kind of, that's totally for stoners, you know that, right? <laughs> it has to be, it has to be. Well, I think well, pillow why, fighting. I think well, we no. need to legitimize pillow fighting. That, that's why I that. think Shark Week is for stoners. Oh yeah, because I don't know if you ever actually watched. Uh, I did for a while. It's kind of the same it's, show. Because Jason over Momoa, yet. I wonder how much they paid him. To right, do that. he was he was the big face of it this but year. I saw Tyson was the face uh, of Mike Tyson a couple years ago. Well, and this is this is gonna be a slide. I don't know if you use. Uh, if you used HBO Max or Max.com or whatever that service is called these days. Yeah, they keep but switching around. they took, Shark Week took over the front page. Mm. And to the point where I was like, I don't care. Yeah. They and, promote the heck out of it. And it was like, it was nuts. I was like, can I turn that off? Because everything's about yeah. shark versus octopus or something like that. I'm like, well, that does sound pretty good. Well, I mean, the movie's probably fantastic. I, I cannot wait to see The Meg The Meg. Too. The Meg 2. I've heard great things about it. And uh, I'm really excited about it. I'm just letting you know. I'm happy for you. So I heard the first half is kind of boring, and then when they start discovering this whole new world under the sea, it's like... It's on, it's baby. It's the best movie ever. It's on. So, uh, but yeah, Ocho 2. Ocho, have you ever, changing subjects abruptly here, have you ever ordered um, like a, a fast food meal, and you open up the wrapper, and it just looks terrible? Like it looks nothing like what you thought it was going to look like, or it looks... Absolutely like nothing that it would look like on, say, the advertisement on TV. That's pretty That's pretty typical. All right, they always have the most beautiful, pristine-looking hamburger or taco on the commercials, and when you get there, the cheese is barely hanging on. There's just a little line of beef in there, and it looks terrible. You, you've, I'm sure you've experienced this, right? Come on, man. Well, I've experienced it far too often. And one man experienced this in New York and said, enough, and has placed a class action lawsuit against Taco Bell because they overstated the amount of beef and other ingredients because the food he got did not look like anything in the picture. And I thought, way to go, man, because if this actually goes through, and I think this, these types of lawsuits have happened quite often, there's going to be a lot of fast food joints that are going to be in trouble, right? If they're actually held to the standards of making their food look like what's on TV, they're in trouble. But if you think about it, you do expect something to look like the advertising with other products. Like if I look at a car or I see a car commercial, Ford and you know, F-150, who, like that looks great. You know, then you get to the dealership, you go, wait a minute. The, the restaurants that don't do it to you. But for got, whatever reason, we accept it with fast food. They don't lie to you or those Mexican restaurants when they put the pictures on the table. Yeah, the actual pictures. Like the actual, yeah. like someone's out there with their, yep. mm-hmm. with their the, cell phone their camera. disposable. And they're like, tick, tick, tick. yeah. And I mean, I like yeah. those places. That's when you know it's a good sign. Like, hey, they're proud of their food, even though it looks like crap. But uh, it's but no, I I get what you're saying. I get the fast food. Funny, problem. I don't think this guy is gonna win. But it says the lawsuit on Monday. This is from Newsweek. Uh, the lawsuit on Monday comes almost a year after the man Frank Siragusa purchased a Mexican pizza from Taco Bell in September of 2022, and he's just now getting around to soon about it. Dang it, just now thinking about well, it. Well, I think. Well, he, so hold on. He said it noticed. He noticed that it contained approximately half of the beef and bean filling that he expected, and looked and did not look like the images posted on TV by the other customers. So he's suing, man. We're, I'm going to keep an eye on this because I am very curious whether or not this actually goes through. Because, again, I think this could set a dangerous precedent for a lot of fast food restaurants that are just throwing food sloppily together. You know, it's funny. When I was in elementary school, I think I was in elementary school, maybe middle school, we actually had someone come to my school whose job it was to prepare fake food for television commercials. And I was fascinated by it because most of the time when you're looking at those things, it's not real food. I don't know if you're aware of that when yeah. they show over, like it's glazed or like glue yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and they brought some of the magic. Yeah, they brought some of the props, you know, in, in, and we were looking at it, and in real life, they didn't look right. But by the time you get it on TV and through camera mm-hmm. and everything, it looked like a big juicy burger with a waterfall of deliciousness. Yeah, but see, if you sue them for that, but then like what happens, like I remember I've been to McDonald's 
back when I was younger, and they didn't even give me a patty. <laughs> yeah, that that's a problem. So, but, but see, nowadays, but you that's just, not as advertised. What right? you do is you just throw down. Now, nowadays, you just go right behind the counter and start. Well, no, I mean, like, it, wouldn't that be the same argument? Like, hey, yeah. Well, I think that was a genuine mistake. Yeah, okay. so you could say that's a mistake that we didn't make your taco look like your taco, dude. Yeah, that, we dropped could, it a couple times. I think you need to work for the uh, the defense, Taco Bell defense. But according to the lawsuit, in addition to the Mexican pizza, Siragusa also accused Taco Bell of false advertising on a number of items, including the Crunch Wrap Supreme. Oh no, not the Crunch Wrap Supreme! Ah, oh, but maybe this will actually cause Taco Bell to be a little bit more honest in their advertising, or if nothing else make their tacos a little bit better. So you think you have had a bad day? I heard this story and realized this woman probably had the worst day of anyone so far this year in the Houston area. This is uh, Sibley? S- oh, uh, Silsby, Texas. That's in, that's in this area, right? Yeah? You're, you're shaking. I figure well, you're from here. I've never heard of it, but uh, it's from, uh, this is from Houston News. She walks out into her backyard and a snake falls off on her, out of the sky, while she's mowing the yard, actually. And you're thinking, wait it's a minute. fake news. It's like, wait a minute. Hold on. Snakes don't just fall out of the sky. Yeah, they do. Well, in this they case... They fall out of trees all the time. They do fall out of trees, but she was mowing a yard, presumably not under a tree. That's when it gets scary, because you don't know if the snake fell out of the tree to get you. Or, exactly. Or it fell out of the tree because it's a stupid snake. Right. And it should die right, right, so, right so there. So she's there. freaked out. Well, snake didn't just hit her and bounce off. It, like, hit her arm and, like, wrapped around yeah. her arm. And she's freaking out. Well, that's not where it stopped, because moments later, she realizes it didn't fall out of the sky by itself. It was dra- uh, dropped by a hawk, and the hawk went down to retrieve its snake treat while oh. it was on her arm. So now she's got double trouble. Oh, the snake is that. wrapped around her arm, yeah, and now the, the hawk is clawing at her, presumably Ooh. the snake, yeah. everything, and this woman's yeah. just trying to mow her yard. That's a tight, tight, t- that'd be a cool tattoo. That is, sc- yeah. Looks like she that got, is so <laughs> Looks like she got a scary. tattoo, and the guy was just really bad. That's yeah. what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a bad one. Look at all the bruising, uh, at too. At least she's got a good smile, though. That's good. That would be the most uncanny story to tell somebody, and no one would believe it. Yeah, not only And then you snake. unravel the scars, you're just like, look at this. And then someone's hilarious. like, no, your husband beats you. That is so odd. I can't imagine. I'd be scared to go outside. I'm constantly looking up every time now. I mean, the snake is bad enough, the hawk will be bad enough, but both of them at the same time, this poor yeah. woman. When you were telling me, when God. you were telling me about that story, I was telling, um, it reminded me of that Netflix series, The Staircase. Mm-hmm. And it's like one of those murder mystery, probably not a real story, but it's like real people are in jail. And like there was, there was the owl defense and like an owl attacked the lady who died. <laughs> and I'm, this is what it reminds me of is like. I guess it, it happens, is. man. I mean, the snake. I see. I'm afraid of snakes, <clears throat> but I'm not deathly afraid of snakes. So, like, if I see one, I'm like, "Oh man, that's crazy." But then I'll be like, "All right, there's a snake." I'll kind of like a spider. If a spider's on me, I'll kick it off fire, and uh, that's a flick, dude. Okay. Uh, All right. <clears throat> but yeah. I, I almost had a slip last week. That sounded awfully close. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably take that out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, now we're back with audience of one. Audience of one, baby. And uh, Conroe's 106.1 and 104.5. But I, I encourage. I remember watching that. I hated. I hate shows like that because you never know what's embellishing part of the story, what's the embellishing part of the story, and what's like really happened. Because really, you only know what really happened to the very, very end, where it's like, oh, they're still in jail. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, okay, uh-huh. so that whole four hour thing I watched about him maybe being innocent didn't matter. Still in jail. <laughs> uh, but there was that twist where the owl theory came in, and I was just like, that's wild. That's that's wild, and you know it's just one of those things that you wouldn't believe. Like no yeah. one would have believed. Birds are scary, man. Birds, owls, hawks. Isn't that what the "Don't Tread on Me" symbol has? No, yeah, no, a, no, 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 no. That's no. the the Gonzalez flag. What am I thinking right? about with the eagle with the flag snake Gonzalez, in it? Is battle I, Gonzalez. I feel like that might be a United States thing. Uh, there's a Mexican flag that also has an. Uh, Who has the snake oh, in it? Yep. Mm-hmm. That's the Mexican flag. Mm-hmm. Okay. I remember, I remember it's one of those flags. There's a couple of them, I think, that have that. So it's Probably because she's from Houston and Mexico hates them. Staying on this theme of birds, I was not aware, but apparently Florida has had their issues with peacocks. Yeah. They roam and they don't have, I don't think they have a territory. Yeah, I think they were protected there. They're a protected no, bird. No, I mean more of like, so it's like certain birds have, you know how birds will migrate. Mm-hmm. Like I think peacocks literally just wander around. 
They do. They don't have like a nest. Yeah. And then they stay yeah. there. Mm-hmm. It's like they just have a nest and they move on. And they the zoo that I used to visit as a kid had peacocks and they were not in like a containment. They just walked around yeah. on the sidewalks and they'd walk up to you or maybe they kind of keep their distance, but they were always there. They're really pretty. At least the males are with their tails, but they're filthy. Right? I mean, they're birds. So they're always pooping everywhere, yeah, just, shedding their, their, yeah, you. Their, you know, their feathers or whatever. Well, apparently for decades they were protected in Florida, but no more. They are no longer off limits to trappers, and trappers can trap them. Well, there is one vet who is eager to get his hands on the bird. Why would he be so eager? Well, he wants to perform a rapid series of p vasectomies <laughs> to help keep the population under control. I guess there are so many that are roaming around that finally this man says, I've got the solution. Line them up. And he's going to have the trappers trap them, and he's going to, I guess he's going to try and do them in rapid succession. Yeah. Kind of like I mean, the lady opening the beers for you at the well, movie see, theater. Well, see, that's the negotiation between environmentalists and people who really care actually about their property values. Yeah, and, I mean, why not? Because I wonder what the stats are for environmentalists who own property. In what respect? Well, just in general. I feel like they're all, their, all their arguments are always about land, but then like they don't, none of them own land. So it's like, hey, I got this peacock problem. Mm-hmm. I'd rather just sit on my front porch and shoot him in the face. No, no, I've got, I've got a solution. <laughs> but like this, this let me at him, boys. This awesome doctor was like, "Hey, I got you're probably gonna get sued." If yeah, you... it's a happy medium. So now we'll just neuter him all. <laughs> He's gonna neuter him. I thought I saw a number in here that that he was anticipating doing. It was a huge number, but I just thought it was funny that the uh, that the headline was Florida peacock problem meets a vet with a vasectomy plan and a legal loophole. More power to him. That's what I'm saying. That's a good compromise. Yep, yep, it sure is. You appear to have the same skin tone as I do. Do you you burn, don't you? Yeah. Easily. Yeah, easily. I do you tan at all? Well, I mean, I think I I think eventually I'll like for example, if I get sunburned, I'll be recovering from that for like a week and then I'll have yeah. like two days of like, oh, you look you I look good. I think you came in here with a sunburn at one yeah. point. Yeah. A few weeks ago. I'm not supposed a to get sunburned. Ago. Yeah, I, I get burned too. I do tan a little, right? Not much. But I'm, I'm one of these guys that burns, unfortunately. Well, there is a, um, a, a solution, per se. Because uh, as you know, in China, we talk about China a lot here. They're also experiencing a crazy hot summer. Well, they want to protect themselves, too. And there is a new trend to help keep the sun off your face. I think you may want to show these pictures. These are called face keenies. And face keenies are what people are wearing to the beach to keep the sun off of their face. And I have to admit, it looks a little bit like an S&M mask. Or maybe a Lucha Libre. I don't know. Take your pick. But this is for real, and it's, it's terrifying, to be honest with you. This woman wearing a full body suit, including a face keenie. Just picture something like a swimming cap material over your entire face, but with a hole for your eyeballs and your yeah, lips and your nose. Me. And that looks absolutely terrifying. <laughs> Oh, my God. It says, their face keenies are the newest and hottest fashion surging with the surging temperatures in Beijing. Oh, my God. Would you wear one of those? I mean... No way, man. I, Just spray I don't, some... Yeah. I feel like I'd be hotter in that than That's I would be... That's kind of what I'm thinking. That looks terribly uncomfortable. Whatever. Stupid. <laughs> it is incredibly stupid. You know what else is incredibly stupid? When you are ordering some food to go at a fast food restaurant, getting back to fast food... And you get the bag into your car, and you realize, oh, man, they didn't give me any napkins. Or, oh, they forgot straws. That's the worst. I'm sure you've had that happen to you, right? They don't give you, like, a yeah. fork or a napkin or a straw or something like that. And it's really, really frustrating, especially when you're in the car and you need that. Because it always seems like you're going to spill something when you're driving and eating. Are you a good driver or eater at the same time? No. I don't like to eat. I don't like to eat like that at all. Even if like, I had to, I would at least pull over and eat. Yeah, I hate I hate trying to eat a hamburger while eating or something like that. I always try if I'm I am going to do it. I try to get something that's really easy, easily consumed while driving, like a chicken nugget or something. Yeah, but you can just pull <clears> over <throat> and actually eat for ten minutes. It's not going to like kill you. Yeah, that's true. But I might lose ten minutes of uh, travel time, man. I got to make good time. Okay. When you're Fair dad on, on, gonna, on a road trip, it's I, always I'm, about making good I'm time. I'm too old, Andrew, to convince you of anything. Oh well, yeah. So, Wait, no, I'm too old for you to I'm convince me I'm too old to convince anything. you. No, you'd be too young. Oh, you're too to, old. There you you're go. You're too old. And then, I mean, when you're, you're, right. you're this stupid. 
<laughs> you can't convince you. Can't convince you. Well, in New York, under a new city law going into effect Monday, which I think was last Monday, restaurants will not be, oh my God, forking over utensils. I hate these little puns. In takeout and delivery orders any longer, at least not with customers um, to go orders. Like, so if you order something on like Uber Eats or whatever, don't take it out on the Uber Eats guy. They're following orders from the state when the restaurant does, is no longer going to put utensils in there. How? Unless you specifically ask them. So now you've got to ask them, yeah. okay, how annoying Just is Just utensils, this? right? Not like sauces. No, but that's another thing. A lot of them aren't even doing ketchup or anything anymore unless you specifically ask. Yeah. But I have been to like a fast food restaurant that dumped like 30 you know, ketchup oh, packets, I've... and you're like, what? That is such a waste, man. And that's probably why now they don't do it at all because one guy ruined it for everyone. Ketchup packet guy. No, man, but it isn't. It is annoying. So if you're in New York and you're ordering food and you have no utensils, it's the blame it on the government. Well, it makes me think of other weird things that they spend their time trying to solve, especially like considering like the climate stuff. Yeah, I think they're they mean well. Well, no, it's more. Right? Just, but no, it's funny because you know someone was. spent the money on a research that said, "Hey, how can we really make an impact?" And it's like. Oh, let's make biodegradable straws. Or, yeah, those are terrible too, by the or, way. Or let's let's just say, hey, if you're doing Uber Eats, you can't. They don't give you any utensils or condiments or anything unless they ask for it. Mm-hmm. And it's, and but to me, I'm thinking everyone's gonna ask for it, like every single time. You would think, yeah, you would think. Because that, that's the convenient part of ordering food is you don't have to do the dishes. Yeah, and I'm sure this is an environmental thing. They, they well, no, it totally yeah, is an environmental yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, they're the same state that outlawed large sodas too, right? So See, I, think I get that, though, because you Oh, you just drink more of you've them. You've been to 7-Eleven where they have the big, big mega gulp. The mega gulp. It's like, like the 44-ounce trough. <laughs> yeah, like that's just, you can't even put it in a cup holder. Right? No, you can't. And drive. So, yeah, they're, yeah. Back to the driving and eating scenario. Yeah, everything's like, I think you can only have 16-ounce drinks in New York at a fast food or at a, a convenience store, I believe. I, mean, I, I don't, I've never been to New York. But that's so annoying. Since, I read that article. Since, man, since the times have changed there. Times have changed. But, uh, but yeah, I think it's kind of funny, though. They're, we're not going to give anyone ketchup unless they ask, but... I guarantee or you everyone's going to ask. Or a fork. That's another thing. What's I'm saying? It's like, that's the whole reason you order food to go. But most people aren't going to know to ask. That's the thing. It's an expectation that it's just going to be delivered with takeout food. No. Because you're, it's, you're on the go. No, you're going to learn that. You're going to learn that mistake pretty fast in New York. Well, I wonder if some of these delivery apps don't have the option to select. They're going to need to add something to that app that says, do you want condiments or do you want utensils and napkins? But if they don't and then the restaurant doesn't put it in there, you have no way of getting it. So you're just going to have to... Eat with your hands, no napkins. So annoying. Yeah, there's probably going to be there's probably going to be more laws like that coming forward. Oh, I wonder what the next one's going to be. What do you think the next one is going to be? No paper bags. They're just going to hand you the food in their hands. <laughs> you go. Well, Here's your burger. I, I mean, because that's wasteful, and this is all about waste. So I can see that. I can see paper them. sacks. Can't we can't use paper? Can't use plastic. It all ends up in the landfill. So we'll just solve that problem. You just make the hamburger and no, set it right there. What now. they'll do is they'll just put it like a you know like the Whopper or like the Big Mac box. Mm-hmm. The hot ma- side hot and the cold side cold, baby. And then wait, what? Oh no! You're talking about their old school way. Yeah, the old McDonald's BLT or yeah. whatever it was Mick BLT, the hot side hot and the Isn't cold that side weird? cold. They stopped doing that. I wonder why. Because it didn't Cause it work. Was stupid. It was stupid. It um, didn't work. It was a No, I know what you're talking about gimmick. now, but I can see what yeah, the meat doing. and patty was on one side and the, the lettuce and cheese was on the other. But the stupid thing is, once you put the cover on, the warmth from the burger just made condensation and made everything mushy. It was stupid. It's stupid. Yeah. Uh, but no, they're probably just going to make a bigger box and they just throw it all in the box. Okay. It's Solved. Like the, the fries are going to be all around your hamburger. Yep. Yep. That's, that's the solution. I don't know what the next one's going to be. It's going to be someone with cars. Because, you know, they're always talking about getting rid of gas stoves and all that kind of stuff. And then, yep. uh, but Because, you know, people are actually thinking of this stuff. Oh, yeah. And they're, we're spending money on research. Like, what what do you think we could do? I don't think we have any listeners in New York. To so limit, it's New York, man. Well, it's not even that. It's like more... Screw those guys. Well, it's like a... What was it I was reading about the other day? I don't know if it was grills or it was they're proposing to limit... Um, Oh, I forget. I'll, we'll, we'll talk this about is, next show because I really think the legislation is called "Skip the Stuff" legislation, yeah. <laughs> and restaurants could uh, could get up to a two hundred dollar, two hundred fifty dollar fine for each offense. Can you imagine that that tip line? Yeah, I gotta tell you, McConnell's s- sandwich shop 
They were giving out utensils. Well, isn't it a sandwich shop? They're still doing it because they yeah, want to. They're going against the law. We got to go to that sandwich shop. We got to do it. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, we got to talk about it. What? What about what? Are we closing the show? No, 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 no. Well, I mean, we will soon, but uh, before the show ends, we got to talk about Paul Rubens, aka Pee Wee oh, yeah. Herman. Man, he passed this past week. I got to know your thoughts on Pee Wee. Were you a Pee Wee Herman? No, actually, fan? I was. N- I, I did not get introduced to him till later. I think the first thing I saw on him was Blow. Oh God, the movie. Oh man, he was awesome in that. And I then I know who Pee Wee is. The character. I know he know. goes on adventures. <laughs> yes, big adventures. And I know that he's beloved. So I know that. And like he had a TV show, and uh-huh. then he had a movie. Pee Wee's Playhouse, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, and then the second one was Big Top Pee Wee. I remember all these because I liked the movies. I didn't really get into the shows, but I watched the movies over and over and over again. But the character of Pee Wee always confused me as a kid because I couldn't quite figure out, like, what's wrong with him? Yeah. <laughs> like, it was now from an act, from an acting standpoint, as a theater performance, it was pretty good. You have to admit, he created this character, he was able to get into character, and it was a popular, obviously yeah. likable character. So from that aspect, kudos to you, Mr. Paul Rubens, but... As a child watching it, I was very confused as to what this guy's deal was. <laughs> like, what, what's with the laugh? What, he was very awkward. Yeah. He loved his bike a lot. But the show, Pee Wee's uh, Playhouse, was really odd. I mean, because it was like a combination of animation, claymation, and live action. And he had like a couch that would talk to him and his house would talk to that. him. Yeah, and I, there were all kinds of big stars that rolled through there or had, like, bit parts on that show. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the names. Lawrence Fishburne, I think, was on there once. He was, like, the cowboy that would come out every now and again. Um, I don't know. There were a few others I can't think of at the moment. But the character Pee Wee Herman, very odd. But R.I.P., Paul Rubens, apparently he was battling cancer, I think, right? And he kept it private for a while, and I think he was 70 years old, 71. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know. People really cared about that, so. Yeah, it, it was all over the place. I remember. Well, I think also when you're, I feel like when you're in the industry like that and you've uh-huh. done so many little things, you do become kind of friends with everybody. He knew a Cause, lot of people. Because he was, I mean, I know Pee Wee's was a big success. And it was on the air for almost like a decade or something like that. And the yep. movies were a big success. And then I think, and he was in a bunch of movies, like random movies. Yes. Yes, he was. He was... It's, oh, he did a lot of voice work. I mean, if you go to his IMDb page, he's got a long list of that's things he did. Just, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but, uh, but whatever. See you later, Pee Wee. <laughs> don't don't be like that. Well, it's bro. not like he's going to hell. Don't be like Maybe that. Maybe he is because he's a pervert. But I mean, you know, you never yeah, know. Yeah, you know, we, everybody did kind of sweep that under the rug. You know, it's weird. Did have though? a movie theater that incident? Story, yeah, but that story <laughs> didn't really make a lot of sense to me. Like, what else are people doing in there? Uh, well, what do you mean? Because <laughs> you went to like an, an X-rated place, correct? To watch X-rated movies, which you would assume people would just would do. do that. Yeah, yeah. I because like the way you, if I remember the story that they were making out, like he was a straight up. Well, I think he was ahead of his time. Had he done that now, he'd probably be celebrated. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> think about I don't it. Know. I mean, things are different. Well, they now. made it sound like he was watching people or something. I don't really. Remember. I don't remember the specifics. That would of be it pretty either. wild, though. It's like some Pee Wee's next to you, like staring at you while doing that stuff. And you're just kind of like, okay. But I would never be in that situation because I don't do those kind of things. But all right, audience of one, we're going to be ending that show with a bang. R.I.P. Right? Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, it's fine. We can. I've got a ton more stuff. I'll save them all well, we for want, next week. We want the onesies to send it in. Audience of one show at gmail.com or Facebook, uh, audience one show. And then, uh, but we're on Lone Star Community Radio. Don't forget to support community radio and television. Donate to the show specifically. There's a, do- a download, a donate link in the description below. You can sponsor the program. We're fairly inexpensive because Andrew, all I really cares about is uh, food that doesn't look like food. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and face keenies. I thought you were going to go with the Taco your, Bell got caught candy. with like sawdust or whatever in their meat. I, well, they did. That was years that, ago. That was though. real, though. That was that, real. That was, real. Yeah, that was not was, fake news. I was waiting for that. Yeah, their meat only was like 30% meat. I'm like, well, what's the other yeah. 70%? Well, Rocks, yeah, soil, well, dirt. Don't, well, don't look up the Parmesan, the Kraft Parmesan, then. Uh-oh, is this a new one I missed? Well, you know, they. I think like 20% of it is not Parmesan. It's, it's not cheese? It's like plastic. 
Oh it's no! Just, it's an edible plastic to keep it separated, like so Legos. Like so, the cheese doesn't stick together. Like Legos, yeah. It's, it's exactly it's like Legos. It's cheese Legos, Lego cheese. But audience of one with Andrew and Richard here every Wednesday at ten o'clock. Subscribe to us on every your favorite platform. Tell everyone. All share. Right. Bye, Andrew. Everyone have a good week. Get back to school. That's good right. luck. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys.